Hey, Mike here, and welcome to Mike Talks. Many Mike Talks, these are talks that enable a thriving posture in the workplace. We're going to do a four part series, and uh, we're going to anchor it on a story and a quote. Here's a story it's an ancient story. If you want life, if you really want to get this thing, if you want to, if you want to live wholeheartedly, you need to be the person who finds treasure in the field and who, upon finding it, gets rid of the rest with joy. How about that? Rather random, hey? But that story has been so transformative to me. But let's couple it with a quote, a really good quote. Life is pure adventure, and the sooner we realize this, the quicker we can treat life as art. Maya Angelou. Testing one, two. So we've been playing around with this beautiful ancient story that talks about a man who finds a treasure in the field and who goes and sells everything that he has so that he can have this treasure. But there's this beautiful word that's mixed in that. He goes and sells everything that he has with joy. Maya Angelou spoke about uh, life is pure adventure. And I don't know about you, but uh, adventure and joy just seem to go hand in hand. So our final part of this uh, four-part series is to play with this word joy. We've already spoken about the mindset of the adventurer. The adventurer sees the field and knows there is stuff there, knows there is something to be found. We've spoken about the action of the adventurer, adventurer which is about getting dirty, um, digging, going beneath the surface. And then we've got this beautiful posture, which is sort of like a minimalist posture. As I get, I give. Uh, the only way to do something new is to leave something else behind. But all of this within this beautiful attribute or value or attitude of joy. So let's talk about joy. Joy is um, something that uh, sometimes we maybe can't always grasp, uh, but we certainly know when we see it. We know when we're in the company of people who are joyful, what it does for us. Now, the thing about joy is that joy is something that is not really external. It's something which is internal. Have you ever heard somebody say something like this? If you, wouldn't, if you didn't do that, I wouldn't get angry. Or um, I'd be happy if you. You'll notice those statements are saying that happiness or joy is dependent on somebody else doing something. But joy never comes from external. Joy comes from internal. Joy is something that rests here, which isn't dependent upon somebody else doing something or an external circumstance. Um, we give up agency when we tie the way that we feel about ourselves to something that is happening externally. We remain the victim if our happiness or our joy is dependent on something outside. So joy, first and foremost, is something which is inner built, inner flowing. Now, to say to somebody, be joyful is is nice words, but we know that it's often a lot more difficult than that. Now, I want to borrow from Seth Godin here, as I often do. And uh, Godin says uh, something beautiful. He says, uh, sometimes we wake up and we just feel good. We feel happy. This could be because the chemicals in our body are all aligning, or it could be because we have received some external news, which is good. And he says, in some ways, it's true to say that um, our mood is given to us. But then he carries on and he says, but there's also a lot that we can do to influence our mood. For example, when I go into a place of gratitude, the gratitude is going to influence how I feel. Or say I move into a place of contemplativeness or mindfulness or prayerfulness. Or say I just pause and slow down and just appreciate what I've got. That is all something which is coming from within. And joy is mostly found in going within, not going with, without. So um, sometimes our mood is given to us externally, but most often 
our mood is determined by what it is that we're doing from within. So here's the big, big thought. The person who finds the treasure is joyful because they know what it is that they have found. And because they know they have something so great, they're able to joyfully let go of the rest. They're joyful because of what it is that they have in their hands. Now, I have seen people who have very little in their hands, and yet they are so joyful. And I have seen people who have got so much in their hands, and yet there is no joy. Is it possible that joyful people focus on what it is that they have, even if it's not much? And unjoyful people or unthankful people are focusing on all the things that they wish they could have, but they don't have. The person in this parable is joyful because they've found something and they recognize what it is that they have. So I've introduced you um, through this series to two people called Joe and Sally. And as you would have seen, um, we're not being too hard on Joe, but Joe, Joe is the person that we want to try and move away from. Sally is the person that we want to try and move towards. So let's uh, give this sort of example. Um, Joe leaves the meeting and he thinks to himself, um, I'm so proud of myself. My presentation went better than Sally's. Sally leaves the meeting and uh, she says to somebody else, she says, wow, I'm so chuffed with Joe. Look how well he did. But can you believe that Joe and I get to share these presentations? Can you believe it that Joe and I get to do this work? You'll notice what Joe's done is Joe's taken something and he's related it to an external, or at least I'm better than Sally. Sally takes something and she goes inwards and she finds the joy because she finds the privilege of what it is to be able to share, to be able to present, to be able to work that privilege. This guy, lady, he finds his treasure. They're able to do so much from a place of joy because they know what is in their hands. It isn't how much you're given, but it's what you do with what you've been given. So let's end off by going to a bit of Sia Colisi. I don't know how many of you have read his book, Rise. But towards the end of the book, uh, Sia really moves me where he says something like this. He says, you can rise and you will rise. But he gives four things that we need to do. He says, you need to protect your dreams. You need to believe. And here's the part that I really like. You need to grab and use the opportunities and resources that come your way. And then his fourth thing is, you need to work hard. Sia, um, in the book, beautifully demonstrates how he used, and often they were very small things that were put in his hand. We can rise, we can be the adventurer, but we need to just look at what's in our hands and allow that which is within us to create this level of joy that uh, flows and not be dictated to the external circumstances that are outside us that might need fixing, that might need engagement, but they don't determine the way we speak to ourselves. Our joy comes because we're holding the treasure in our hand. Yeah.